Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial. Today we're going to be doing what um, I call vector smearing. And it's where we are creating these vector shapes that smear instead of create a motion blur. Mikey's Production Tips is brought to you by Cinema Spice. After Effects tools, video overlays and backgrounds, and sound effects. Now I'm going to show you three different ways of doing this and they all have their advantages and disadvantages and it really just depends on what your needs are with your animation and uh, because some of them work faster, some of them work more accurately and things like that. So the first way I want to show you is, well let's create a new composition. Okay, and let's just create that little guy again, little star. So uh, this little star guy, the first way is using a motion blur and then um, making it not blurry. <laughs> so I'm using levels with that. And the trick with this is you don't use the motion blur that's built in. You use the um, force motion blur. So let's actually first uh, give some movement to this guy. And let's have him start where he began. So I'm going to copy that first keyframe. Okay. Maybe you make them a little quicker. I'm going to just squish those together. Okay. So let's add a motion blur to this. Instead of um, clicking here, clicking there, which adds motion blur to it, um, I am going to go to Effect, Time, Force Motion Blur and so that it turns on as an effect. And we can change the samples there, it's at eight, let's try 32 to make it a little more smooth. And then let's go up to effect, color correction, and levels. And what levels, um, it's a color correction effect, but what you can do is right there, instead of the RGB channel, we can go down to the alpha channel, this top point, see all those little uh, lines there? That's where it's, uh, the opacity is and you can see because there's 32 of these because 32 samples um, if I were to change this to 2 you can see there's 1 and 2 3 you know 1 2 3 so um, go back to 32 and I can crush this down so it makes everything solid and so what we have here is that smearing look um, that you see with you know some cartoons and things like that these days instead of a motion blur it actually just kind of stretches out the image uh, but the issue here um, th this actually renders out fairly fast but the issue here is you can see the eyes um, they still stay motion blurred even though the outside is solid so if you have solid color shapes, this method will work just fine for you. Now let's look at a second method. Let's duplicate this layer, move it over. And trim this up. So the second method, let's take off the motion blur and the levels. We're using the same motion path so we can see what it, the second method looks like, and it's using the echo effect. So we go to effect, time, and then echo. And what echo does is it makes a copy of itself um, in time. So you can see that's just one copy, but when it adds on top of each other, you can see the echo operator is add, and number of echoes is one. So let's put this somewhere in between. And first thing from echo operator from add, let's go to maximum. And that should uh, solve that problem where it was making it white. Number of echoes, we can move up. But the time, we want to drastically shrink down. Right now it's, it's pretty small, negative uh, 0 0.03. But let's add a couple of zeros in there. And then what we have is a very small movement, and let's increase the number of echoes. And as this moves around, you can see 
that's nice and smeary and the eyes look nice and sharp but you can also see it's taking a lot longer to render this out if you know if time render time is a concern of yours then this may not be the way to go but you can see some cool stuff it's doing is as it's going around the curve it's curving that smear as well all right so that is using the echo effect and this is the the way i most often do it just because it creates a pretty nice result. But again, sometimes render speed is an issue, and with that, this definitely takes a hit because it's creating you know, almost 200 different echoes, which is a lot to process. So let's talk about the third way. And this way, we're going to use some expressions, and it's kind of a, a cool way of doing it. It does have its own problems, but it renders very fast. So let's um, create a new one actually delete all those keyframes and what I want to show you with this one is um, it works really well if you're just going horizontal or just vertical movements you know left and right or up and down um, if you want to go diagonals we have to add some extra expressions to it and it's using the minimax effect so let's first show you how to do it just left and right or up and down so position let's just do a move straight over here. Oh, I still have all that echo effect on it. So let's take that off. Keyframe the position left and right. Okay. So there's our first movement left and then right or sorry, right and then left. I, I, I promise I do know which is left and which is right. So let's add to this the mini max effect. So that is under channel, mini max. And what I'm gonna do here is change this from color to alpha and color, change horizontal and vertical to just horizontal. And as I grow this radius, you see it stretches it out and how to um, do that I can go in and keyframe this by hand, but let's try to make it go automatic and what we're going to use is The speed of the position. So let's add an expression to the radius So if you hold down option or alt click on the radius stopwatch up there It'll automatically bring it up down the timeline. And let's type this This expression which is this dot position dot speed and then let's divide that by say 50 because it's going to give us a pretty big number All right, I'm gonna. Now the problem with this, is, you first see here, is the speed. As soon as I hit that keyframe, that speed is on. It's ready to go. So in order to make this look nicer, we need to ease these. So that's F9 on your keyboard, and what that does is, as I go through it, it looks a little nicer. It doesn't just automatically. all the way on see it kind of ramps up because of the easing now the problem with this is it, you can do this vertical or horizontal you have to uh, switch you know just horizontal or just vertical now say we want to um, go diagonal well if I were to move this diagonally that diagonal movement. You see it just um, smears it out uh, horizontally, which is not what we want. So let's add to this some more effects, another expression to be able to make this turn diagonally. So to this um, layer, let's add in the distort menu, transform. And we're gonna duplicate that so there's two transforms and then take one of them, stick it above the minimax, minimax in between, transform at the bottom. Let's take this top one and I'm going to add expression to the rotation of it. So alt or option click on that stopwatch. It brings it down in the timeline and that's where your pick whip is and I'm going to pick whip the rotation of the other transform, the one that's below the minimax. 
and then at the beginning of that expression that it created, put a minus sign. And what that does is it will, whatever rotation we put here, it will unrotate it up there. So what we can do is be able to change the angle of this. Now again, we want to be able to change the angle of this automatically. And so there's an expression we can add to this. And what we do is we add it to the rotation expression. So let's get some room in here so you can see what I'm doing. First, we need to bring in the value of the X and Y. <clears throat> and After Effects knows as it's moving from this point right here up to this point, you know, how far it's going, le you know, left and right X and Y values. And that's with the velocity. So if we go, um, say, X equals this dot position dot velocity and then in square brackets do a zero and I'm going to copy that and then in the second one instead of x we're going to have that be y and instead of zero we'll have that be one and that's just taken um, velocity is like speed except for it has an x and y value instead of just one uh, value of speed which is just how fast it's going this shows you how fast it's going and in what direction. And then to this, we need to add, we need to create um, an angle from this. So we know the x and y, we need to create an angle, and that's using the tangent function or the a tangent function because we've got to reverse it. So go into JavaScript math. I click on this little arrow, and it brings me up all these uh, different things I can do. And we go math.atan2, see y and x right there. And that creates the radian of it, but we need to turn that into degrees. So let's also go into where it says other math and radian to degrees. And I'm supposed to put this right in here where the radian is. So cut that and paste it right in between that. And then that. is the problem. <laughs> I spelled position wrong. Let's go in and fix that. All right, there we go. So what this does now is as it goes at an angle, it will automatically adjust the rotation automatically. But I do want to show you that there are some problems with this, even though it, it renders very fast. Um, let's go in and take these same keyframes that had all the curves in it. See, as it goes around the curve, it doesn't it doesn't create curvy lines like the first one does. It just it takes that angle and kind of wraps it around the curve. Um, it doesn't create that curvy um, smear. But in most cases, as it's moving real fast, you don't notice. And you can see that renders really fast. And so if you've got lots of elements that you need to do this to, um, this might be the option for you. So let's go over those again Last, as I'm uh, finishing up here, the three different methods. The first method was using CC Force Motion Blur and then Levels to be able to create that smear. And the levels are just taking the alpha and crushing it so that everything is nice and sharp. The problem again with this is if you have any different variations of colors in your object you're trying to smear, um, like those eyes, it doesn't work. So if it's a solid object, it's going to work just fine. And it also creates the curves, um, which the last method doesn't. Second method is the most robust as far as what it can do, um, but also is the most intensive with the processing of it is using the echo effect. And remember, we create a very, very, very small negative number for the echo time in seconds, and then increase the number of echoes in order to create that trail. And this is nice because you can go and see those nice, crisp, clean, uh, smeary curves around the, around the edges there. And then the last method, 
which did take a little bit more of expressions, but once you have it, you can copy and paste it easy enough, is using the Minimax and make sure that it's on alpha and color so that um, if, if I turn this just onto color, then it just does inside of it and it doesn't do the alpha edge. And it should end on horizontal. And then what we did is we used the transform to change the rotation using some expressions with the velocity and the speed. So those are the three methods. Um, again, this last one, it works very fast. So if you've got lots of elements, it's the one to use. Hopefully you learned some cool stuff and I'd love to see what you create with this. If you create any cool animations with this smearing effect, um, go ahead and put it in the comment below or share it to any of the social media accounts that uh, I run and operate on uh, YouTube or Facebook or anything like that. So thank you so much for watching. If you haven't had a chance, make sure you subscribe to the channel and check out all of the other tutorials. We'll see you next time.